Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on aligning the player Z normal to the ground normal. A lot of people ask how do I get the player to align, uh, to align to the ground and today I'm going to show you using logic bricks and it's really really easy only using basically two constraints. Uh, here's a setup that I have right now that I want to show you the final thing that that I did and see that the player aligns to the ground all right let's get to it I'm gonna add in a plane edge select mode I'm gonna start making the ground I'm just gonna extrude this out on the x-axis I'm gonna bring it up the ground up so we can see when it aligns to the ground like that. I'm just going to move this out a little bit. We're going to take our cursor and put it right in, in the middle of that edge so we can use the spin, the spin tool. So I'm going to take my 3D cursor and move it up on the Z axis a little bit. Spin. Bring it up like that. Press E to extrude on the X axis, G to grab. I'm going to alt select this whole edge right here and extrude it down. Like so. Scale on the Z axis, S to scale, Z. Negative, numpad. Oh, hold up. G. Scale on the Z axis, negative. Let me get that right there. So we're just gonna go ahead and add a material. Just anything. And we want to get our logic panel down here. Because we need to add it the property. This ground our property to ground. Like that. Shadeless. So I'm gonna take my cursor and move it back to the center and I'm going to add in a cube this is going to be our player I'm going to scale it down uh, 0.5 like that bring it up on the z-axis and um, what I like to do is just take this face and just move it up one unit on the z-axis for, for, to look like that another material I like to add the materials to it to see what's going on like that so now we have we're gonna use this cube as the player and we're gonna use this is going to be our ground so now we can start adding our logic to the player so a simple simple movement you know you get two keyboard sensors oh hold up we need to add this as a dynamic object then go to blender game engine mode dynamic key D A so we have our keyboards up right here we need to get a actuator motion actuator motion actuator motion actuator connect them set the linear velocity as uh, five units make sure it's local uh, negative five local so let's test it out press p to play and there we go you see now that we got a simple movement all right now that we got the the movement out the way now we can add in the constraints to the player so what we want to do now is get a ray on the player to detect the ground. So what we want to do is get ray, a ray sensor on the negative Z axis and we want the property set it to property because we want it to de detect the ground. So we got the property ground. A range 
uh, and we need to we're going to use first we're just going to use a constraint so what this is is the ray detects the ground on the negative z axis and when it detects the ground we're going to get a distant constraint this distant constraint is going to uh, constraint on the negative z axis normal local the ray this will be the the range or the size of the the ray so we're going to set that to 0 0.6 and also property property ground okay so that's straight we got it set to initial so let's test it out okay now you notice that the player is aligning to the ground but this can also be a problem now because we need our other constraint if I go up like this the orientation of the player doesn't go back to its initial uh, orientation so we can't we can't move correctly anymore so we need to set up a, another constraint to fix that so this is working good we got it follows the ground so what we need is this other constraint and we need an orientation constraint and this orientation constraint on the z-axis um, you can set the damping up to like 20 but the reference direction orientation I'll set it to 360 the z down as well 0 or 360 down so if I get a controller not and this is the opposite of and so what this say is if the ray on the z-axis z-axis hits the ground this constraint will happen the distant constraint will happen so this will align to the ground but if this is not true and it's not on the ground uh, this orientation constraint will happen so this is the not and this is is if it's true so let's see how that works so it's aligning to the ground and so you see that it goes back so that's really helpful so we need that for the player when the player is in the air to go back to the initial position on the z-axis so that's really it uh, using logic is is really simple and easy you know you don't have to use hardcore python to get a simple setup going right here uh, ask any questions if something that you didn't understand I can uh, tell you or whatever you need but yeah this is it right here so I right, peace out